Good afternoon, and welcome to the Cannon County Chamber Connection. And of course, this is always provided by my DTC3. I'm Carolyn Motley, and I'm the coordinator for the Cannon County Chamber of Commerce. And I'm Connie Rigsby, and I'm a board member on the chamber, and uh, the senior center director. I've got many hats. I've got another hat. I've here, got girl. many other hats, but we're <laughs> welcoming you to hat. February. That's uh, hard to believe. It's not going to be long before Christmas. Don't start that, Karen. <laughs> don't, don't start that I Christmas thing. thing. I know you things. haven't got it up yet, so, but uh, February is it here. up yet. It's the month of love. Oh, uh, well, how sweet. <laughs> how sweet. Did you forget that? You act like you forgot that it's the no, month of love. I, I always remember Valentine's Day because my oldest sister's birthday was on Valentine's, so. Okay. I always remember that. You remember that. Well, we've got a lot of love to share today. A lot of folks here with us that are going to be telling us things that are going on here in Cannon County and around in our surrounding areas. So I'm excited about that. Well, I'm, I've already got one Valentine's present. You did? Yep. What'd you get? Well, I mean, I got it for somebody else. Oh, you got it for somebody else. Hardy's had a coupon that if you buy one thick burger, then you get one for your significant other. Well, that's Free. special. <laughs> That is a good special. I will tell you that we'll probably like that. Karen, you can't beat that. Well, I, I know that uh, for a lot of our folks out there, it's time to start thinking about those loved ones, and so we'll do that. But we've got some love for some of our chamber members in the community. We do. We do. We just finished with our annual meeting, and of course it was at the Blue Porch this year. They did a great job of catering that, and we had it at their establishment at the Art Center. Um, you know, I guess this is the first time that I've been involved in one of these where we had standing room only because everyone that signed up came, plus two or three others, and I have not had one complaint about the food, <laughs> not one thing. It's almost scary. <laughs> well, it was. It was a nice event. Uh, again, you were absolutely right. Standing room only. I, I know I met and sat with some fo different folks than I usually uh, have been able to in the past, and so I know that was interesting. Good networking that night. But we installed officers for this year, and um, we were excited to do that and ready right. for 2013. And but we did have a wonderful dinner. We did. It was great. Blue Porch does a good job. They do. So, uh, I was we, happy. We, Everybody <laughs> else was happy. Yeah, that makes me happy. <laughs> it does make for a very nice <laughs> evening. So, but uh, we have Aaron Thompson, owner, <laughs> part owner, partnering, partnering, yeah. owner of the Blue Porch, uh, and it's a wonderful place to go. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, um, I know besides us talking about how good it is. Yeah. <laughs> and everything. What are some of the specialties that you do? Well, we don't have a menu. We just cook what we feel like cooking, and so it kind of feels like home. <laughs> That's what I do and, at home. <laughs> yeah, and you, cut, you never know what, what's going to happen. We figured it out, and in the month of January, we fixed 28 different entrees and 35 different side dishes during just January. Just January. So we're always trying new things and experimenting. And, and sometimes <coughs> when I go down there, they experiment. They say, here, try this. just whip this yeah, every day. We, do, we are known to say, <laughs> here, to just about anybody that walk in the door, hey, here, try a little bit of this. Well, I know before we went on air, Aaron said, you know, today was his day not to cook in the restaurant, but at home you were experimenting. Yeah, so. yeah I've got a rack of pork I'm gonna experiment with tonight. And that may end up on the menu. It may. It may. <laughs> it may end up on the menu. That sounds good. Well, one thing is they also own a bed and breakfast in Northwood County. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just right across the line. Yeah, it? it's a Reedyville address, so it's right on the lawn. Yeah, it is. But they have the um, restaurant at the Art Center. And, mm -hmm. of course, you not only do the shows for the Art Center, but you also do catering, yep. weddings. We uh, do it all. Yes, you do. Yeah. Private yeah. events at the at the house yeah. there in Readable. I know that my group has been there. Yeah, we do private events there. at the house and also at the art center. And when it's not a showtime, you come in and have your event right there in our restaurant. So it's been one year. One year. One year since you opened. I know. I think one of the things they were up here 
uh, on their show during that time period for their welcome for their one year to the chamber and everything. So yeah. we're excited. We're, we're excited too. We really have had a good time and we've been blown away by the support that Cumming County has given us. We've just been absolutely tickled pink. It's been wonderful for us. We both, my mom and I both quit full-time jobs to do this. Just kind of went out on oh, a limb and, and said, went just, for it. This is just part-time, right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just part -time. <laughs> and so we didn't know what, neither one of us had ever had a restaurant. I had never worked at a restaurant before. We just kind of did it on a whim, and it's worked out really well for us so far. Well, you guys do more than I've ever seen. I mean, you can be catering and cooking and have guests at your bed and breakfast, and I thought, I'd just have to back off and say, okay, one thing at a time. We're not well, going to do all this in one day. <laughs> well, for years we've done it. We had full-time jobs and then catered on the side and did the bed and breakfast, so now at least we're working in one place. Mm -hmm. All our cooking in one place. We're working in one place. We don't have to go somewhere work and then come back to the house and cook and then... So, yeah, we, we fed 3,000 people in three weeks in December. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of folks. It's a lot of folks. It was a lot of food. You know, you also uh, just won an award. And, and I did want to say one of the things that the Blue Porch does that I can appreciate is when we have our farmer's market, uh, when that starts up in the spring and through the summer, they are, they're set up right there at the art center out in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And you use a lot as much as their, we can. Right, of their uh, vegetables and things. But you also buy Tennessee products. Most yeah. of your, uh, yeah. most of the things you serve Our are Our pork Tennessee. is local. Um, we buy as much, as many vegetables as we can. We make hot sauce. It's one of my big things. And my dad started doing it, and I, and then he taught me how to do it because he has a job, and I'm in the kitchen all day. So <laughs> he taught me how to do it, and I made 50 gallons of hot sauce this year. And every pepper that went into it was from right here in Woodbury. Oh, really? And so we have seven different flavors, and you can come down to the restaurant, you can try them all. We have sample bottles of every single flavor, so you can try it and see which ones you like. We have some blistering hot ones, and we have some, and we have some that are not so hot. So there's where you spice up your life. That's right. Come get you some yeah. hot sauce. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'll just rub it all over me. It tastes like that. I, I think it's for food. <laughs> I think this is all food problems. <laughs> but where did you get your love of food? Was that from your mom? I know your mom and your partners yeah. in this. Yeah. Um, well, growing up, we cooked. My mom and dad cooked. We didn't go out to eat. We ate at home. And so I just kind of learned how to do it. I've not had any training. I've never gone to school for it. Nothing like that. I just kind of learned by watching them and learning from them and then experimenting. Just because... You're also going to start a new endeavor. And that is, of course, you already bake. Yeah. I mean, you already have cakes. And, right. and uh, of course, they like to network uh, in the community. <laughs> not only do they use our farmer's market, they also use the distillery <laughs> yes, <we laughs> because did. you can buy moonshine cookies and cakes and you've got some hot sauce that and has some. Yep, we've got two hot sauces with the moonshine in it. So, you know, if you use a little of that, by the time you leave, you're going to love everything in there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> and you can also come if you need a birthday cake or if you need cupcakes for an event, just give us a call. We'll do that. We can make any dessert you want. We can get it done for you. And if you just, or if you need a side dish, you're going somewhere and you just need a side dish, give us a call. Casserole. You yeah, can make we'll, a we'll casserole. do casseroles. I mean, we can do lasagnas if you need. I mean, just about anything. We tell everybody we can do anything except sushi. Well, I'm not going to get that. No. <laughs> no. That's not on mine, but uh, right. it could be also on other folks' <laughs> list of things to date. It's so. not going to happen here, so. <laughs> well, it's it's been a great year. And, you know, we wish you all the best uh, for your second year. Thank We're you glad to have you as a part of the chamber, and uh, I, you know it's You'll one be of those. You'll hearing more of my mom. She's on the board. Yes, this year. yes, she's on the board, and she's very vocal. Yes, yeah, she's very vocal. She's she sat shy. behind me yesterday at the yeah, meeting. She's not shy. She will tell you what she thinks. She has great <laughs> ideas, and and she's one of these that uh, she networks with everybody. Yes. <laughs> She didn't care, you know, no, and no. that's fine. And because that the more people the word gets out there, the better off we are. Good. So y'all have been. Uh, it's been a good thing. Good. Thank you very much. Because I think the art center 
should be proud uh, to have a restaurant right there on base that can be used for. Yeah, it's a nice place to come get, and get dinner and go to the show. It's really or nice. Or just come get dinner where you go. To yeah, the show. <laughs> yeah, we're open every day except well, Tuesday. I will so. say they, they do have another unique thing coming up, and this is really under the uh, Art Center events. But uh, you're going to have breakfast with Ariel and her friends. Yes. And I think this is uh, for every little girl, and even if you're not a little girl, and you like Disney's Little well, Mermaid. I, I love Little Mermaid, and I'm not a little girl. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so, but that is a big Disney uh, play that's go going on, and I know that's going on in the Art Center. The characters are going to be there. Yeah, They're going to make confirmed, an appearance. confirmed that Ariel and Sebastian will be there, and then we're going to have two other ones that we have not confirmed who they're Do you know who there. those people are? I don't know who Ariel is. You know who Sebastian is? Probably a fish. I don't know Sebastian. No, he's the crab. He's oh, the crab. Oh, yeah. so, yeah. Sorry. He's yeah. the crab. We always watch Lion King. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah. <laughs> my, my niece dressed up as Ariel for Halloween, so she is extremely excited about so that. So this would be a great for the daughter. This yeah. would be a great kind of outing for folks and everything. And that and then, will be on the 16th of February. 16th, we're going to have a really good breakfast. And it will be breakfast. from um, 8.30 until 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. Now, do but they need to do, call? Yes, yeah, call and make call. reservations. It's filling up fast. Okay. So yeah, make sure you call the Art Center at 563 Arts okay. and get your reservations and come on out and meet some of the cast and have a good time. That'll be fun. It'll be fun. You see these things like in Nashville and so that's right here. Are you asking me to go with you, Connie? We'll need to go. I need to show you who Sebastian is. It'll be fun. You get a date and I'll get a date. We'll meet there. Okay, that would be fine. I don't know if Terry will go for that or not, but we'll see. <laughs> Tell me he gets to see the Little Mermaid. Maybe uh, yeah, he'll yeah, probably go to Hardy's and use that free. <laughs> get one, buy one or something, get one free. Well, All right, fun. well, Aaron, you're also a photographer, aren't you? I am. Yep. A very good photographer. Well, thank you. Although I haven't seen the pictures you took for the car show yet, but I think you are. They're good. good. Are they? Well, yeah. Send those to me. I'm okay. surprised that man hasn't come down here and beat me over the head. Okay. Yeah, I'll send some to you. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And so you're working on some pictures for uh, the Chamber website? Mm -hmm. I'm going to um, do some photos for that. And we did some photos uh, to go for the car show brochure for next year. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, I, so for you out there, Canon TN, that's our website. Uh, for you want to know any information about what's going on here in Cannon County and the Chamber uh, and the businesses, and uh, that's we want one of the things that we want you to use. Out. And we also have photos. Uh, folks can send photos in of Cannon County, and we can get those up and share those with folks out there. So that's a really good thing too. So thank you. Amy. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You should have brought us lunch. <laughs> Told you I'm not cooking today. <laughs> <laughs> pork, uh, pork. <laughs> He's already towed off on himself. He was cooking pork, but he didn't bring any for us. Well, a happy first anniversary. Thank you I very hope much. You very many more. You and your mama both. All right. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Sue. Yes. <laughs> Look at she's in her red. She's got the whole Valentine thing going on here. Miss Sue do. Patrick. Yes. Now okay. Sue, uh, one of the things when I think of February is I think of I think of you. I, I kind of think about how hard this month is going to be on you. <laughs> but the starting of taxes, people yes. coming and getting their income taxes filled out and getting ready for that deadline. So. Right. Tell us what you've been into here lately. Yeah. In the month of January, we do a lot of bookkeeping for small clients, so we've been preparing W-2s and that sort of thing. And then the very end of January, we've gotten to prepare uh, personal income taxes and income taxes for uh, companies that we do. So we've, had, we've got a variety of things to do. Uh, the IRS has kind of slowed us up because we couldn't start e-filing as early as January 30th was the first date. And usually you have a refund calendar that you know if you file when to expect your return. And we don't have that this time. It would be 8 to 21 days, even if you electronic file. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to know for sure what day it will go into the bank. Uh, so there's been a lot of uncertainty this year, you know. And so we need to make sure folks know that so that they yes. are, you know, yes. it doesn't confuse them and 
Yes, it's, it's happened to everybody. We can't find out, and they can't either. So, uh, <laughs> you know, always before when you would e-file, it would say that your expected refund date would be, and they would give you a date somewhere from 10 to 14 days. And this time, we don't really know. And there's a lot of forms still that can't be uh, filed yet. Depreciation is one, which seems like a very simple form, but companies or individuals who have depreciation right now, we can't electronic file. So uh, it's holding people up, you know. Will you ever be able to? Oh, yes. It just yes, the IRS, because of the uh, tax law by Congress not being completed and they didn't know uh, some of the details of the depreciation, they couldn't <coughs> get those forms prepared. Then you have your software vendors who have to prepare the forms. And so there's just been a lot of uncertainty with the tax law this year. So we hadn't known. Well, Sue also does investment uh, counseling and does investment. You mm -hmm. are HDS. I set up financial plans. Right. I uh, sell IRAs and may sell individual stocks, mutual funds, municipal bonds. Uh, and just do, uh, sometimes we'll plan for retirement, like someone knows that in two or three years they're going to start maybe retiring and it's really better to start ahead and we look at their 401k and we look at their IRAs and if they have a pension and try to see how much income they're going to have, can they retire, you know, are they going to have to work on how much social security that can they draw, so, uh, you know, Anyone should start before that. A, a good 10 years is good to start, but, uh, you know, just to see you, and with the uncertainty about how much the health insurance cost is and things like that, you know, there's, uh, it's hard to that's, plan exactly with the way health insurance has been going up. That's probably one of the main areas that you need to look at as far as for retirement is mm -hmm. how your, what type of health benefits Right, and that you also need have available. to plan for long-term care. Yeah. That's a real, you know, we're, most of us have seen a family member that has had to have help either in their home or move to an assisted living or go into a nursing facility, and that's something we need to look at too. And more and more companies have gotten out of the long-term care writing those policies and things because people are now using those benefits and it's costing so much more than they had anticipated. So uh, there's just a lot of planning with that too. You know, and we can't plan for everything, but it's good to have an idea about our health insurance. And, and to actually take a moment and look at it. I, I right. think that's the biggest thing. You well, don't want it, it, it up to sneak up on yeah, you. Yeah, we need to look at our beneficiaries of our IRAs and those kind of things need to be checked on annually. We're at, also, our portfolios need to be adjusted as we're getting closer to retirement. You know, we need to begin to be a little bit more conservative, and uh, there's just a lot of planning we should do, you know, as we get older and as we get closer to retirement. You know, um, a lot of times when you have the pensions or uh, matching funds, 401s and everything, some of that has already been taxed, but some of it hasn't. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what surprised a lot of people when they go to take it out is they think, well, I paid the tax on this, but some of it has not right. been taxed. And, and they need to be aware of that. Uh, we also, uh, many people don't believe their Social Security will be taxed as they get older, but if you have other income and, and uh, you, uh, a married couple, if they have over, say, 32000 in all their income, then up to 85% of their Social Security may be taxed. So people don't think they have to include the Social Security in the taxes, but you do, you know. And uh, you have the things with the IRAs. Maybe they don't need to touch that money, but at age 70 and a half, they have to start taking required minimum distributions and things like that, so, or there's terrible penalties on that. So there's just a lot of things that, you know, they may be aware of somewhat, but they don't fully understand. That That's we why you need to help. look at it every year. And yeah. if we, if we uh, help them with their taxes, we think we have an advantage 
because of that that we see what their age is. We see they're getting close to Social Security and maybe we can try to help them or that they're gonna to have to take a required minimum distribution. Uh, another thing is people will change jobs and they'll leave their 401k there maybe. And then we may wanna to talk to them about moving that and consolidating this little 401k here and this one here and seeing what we, what you know alternatives we have. And then we wanna see that they're performing. So many times when I'm doing someone's tax return, I'll say, well, bring in your 401k, let's look at it and see how it performed this last year. And of course, we've had some really down years, mm -hmm. the last decade. So, you know, it's hard to make it up, but right now the stock market, you know, it's, a, it's at a high again. So we're making money in the stock market. But as we get older, we have to have more of it to be very conservative, so. And to me, it's very important to have someone that you can go and talk to and understand it. Right, <laughs> that can just talk in layman's language to you, you know, I think. And, and I'll supposedly, I'm, I'm with a, a broker dealer called HDVS who is, was started by a CPA for CPAs who wanted to add financial planning to their practice. And so I think we understand, you know, that if you do that, the tax, ramifications of withdrawing that. You know, yes, let's dump. Uh, you know, I have people that call and they say, well, I think I'll just take all that out and pay off my house. You know, and well, what kind of interest rate do you have? Well, 3.9, you know, and I think, well, I don't think we should do that. If we took all that out, look what, how much tax you're gonna owe. Well, they don't realize it's gonna throw them in a higher bracket. They're gonna maybe owe 25% of of that in taxes. So we just like to be there. I kind of am there for anybody that didn't know anybody else to call. You know, <laughs> they come that in. That would be me. They come in about their <laughs> social security, you know, about if you think they should draw it now or wait till 65. And I do I have some uh, ways to check on that form and, and advise them with that or uh, you know, how much life insurance do I need or, you know, some things like that. It's common questions that people just don't think about. I mean, right. you just don't think about it and you need to go to a professional and that would be you. And most of the time, like mama's going into the nursing home, what can we do to get rid of her money so they don't get it all? Well, there's really nothing we can do at that point. Yeah, because so, there should be a planned right, time. And, and, and uh, so we have to look at all that. Yeah. So. Uh, I like to think I help people. Sometimes I feel like I'm just an agent for the IRS. I'm just collecting <laughs> their money for them, and you know. But <laughs> but I'd like to be able to uh, to help people. That's what I really like to do, and to minimize their taxes if at all possible, and that sort of thing. So you know, I I enjoy people and enjoy helping people. I think people that are self-employed too have. Uh, uh, I won't say bigger problems, but there's probably areas that they're not prepared for uh, being self-employed right. too. Well, we went through an audit with a small company this year and it was like with the state of Tennessee unemployment and if anybody made $30, they made us put it on the state unemployment and amend returns and do that. So, I mean, so many small business people misclassify their workers. They put them as you know, an independent contractor when really they are an employee. So, you know, we and I think the audit rates are getting higher too. We had some IRS audits, pretty big ones this year. So they're looking at everybody right now. You, you know, years ago that, uh, um, what you just talked about, uh, having them as an independent, uh, just on short, short term and not mm -hmm. actually an employee, I think that was done more, and maybe that's why the rules changed. Mm -hmm. Is because but they have all that criteria for determining that. Uh, now, I know that auditor that came to us, he said if it's anybody that works for you in the normal course of your business, they're an employee. They're an employee. If you get a plumber or electrician, or if you, you know, get a professional, an attorney, or someone like that, then they may be a subcontractor or independent contractor. But most people, if it's a normal course of your business, they gotta be an employee. And I, 
I told him about one instance when uh, Carolyn and I worked together at the drugstore that we had uh, someone who worked one day and quit, you know, and so we didn't put him on the payroll. And then we were audited and that person came in and made us put him on the payroll. So you think this is a lot of hassle, I've got to keep up with your wages, give you a W-2 at year end, and back then we did it by hand. For one and day. It, yeah, and it was a big hassle, but they made us go back and do it, you know, because now we didn't I have computers that. that help. But we, you know, uh, it's not as hard, but it's still quite cumbersome for small business. And you there's know. a lot of things they, they don't think about those that and they've all have changes every year. There's always some type of change. Right. Uh, in, in the tax codes and different types of things. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always advise people that come into the chamber that want to start a small business. One of the mm -hmm. first things I tell them is to get help setting up mm -hmm. their a business plan. payroll and well, everybody needs a business plan. And I have so many that come in there and they'll say I've rented a building, and and I'm starting this business, and I'm I say okay. Have you uh, went and talked to anybody about making sure you file the right tax forms and all? Mm -hmm. of, well, what are they? And I says, well, you need someone. If you don't know about this, you need to. And I do have books there. The better business, the small business, mm -hmm. uh, and I have a computer that you can go on. And you can go directly into any of these uh, small business areas. Anything that you would have a question about, they're, they're welcome to come in and use it. But so many of them don't have a clue. They just think they're going to open up, they're going to pay the rent for a month and the utilities and get everything fixed up, and then the foot traffic's going to come and they're going to be happy. And or they buy QuickBooks and don't have a clue. How to use QuickBooks? Uh, I don't. I'm not it's sure. It's an expense or an asset. I don't know what those things are. They need help getting it set up and need a little bit of training because even us with training, yes. as Connie knows, we have some problems sometimes with some things QuickBooks does. So, you know, it's a it's a great program for a small business, but you need a little bit of training and you have a little bit of accounting knowledge to be able to do that. And it's the same way with this pro series or whatever the tax, the free websites for your taxes. If you have a very simple return, you can get on there and do it. But then it may not ask you a question that it needed, that you needed, you know. Well, my and daughter, then we have people call the office and they'll say, well, I'm online doing my taxes with uh, Pro Series or TurboTax, I'm doing it with TurboTax, and it didn't ask me this, what do I do? Well, I'll have to say, well, I don't go online and use TurboTax, <laughs> and I don't know. You know. <laughs> or I've already filed it, and I've got my another W-2, what do I do? Well, then you have to amend, so. Yeah. And we, uh, so, yeah, well, it's my not as easy uh, as it seems sometimes, I you know. I referred my daughter-in-law to you the other yeah. day because she had a college question that her daughter's in college. And okay. She was well, and I think we had tax. to amend one for your daughter-in-law one time that she had filed her <laughs> taxes and Didn't something else came in. in and we had to help her amend it. And that's a lot of the questions, too. You know, we, I, you know, I deal with some seniors that have taken in family members, uh, you know, a younger person. Right. So they are now living in their household. They are responsible from their care, everything. And so how do they file that? You know, how are, are they responsible because they live in their house? Household, and mm -hmm. sometimes they don't, and they could have for that mm -hmm. year. So and that's some questions. Have like the child credit, which is a thousand dollars, you know, that that if they are eligible, they can get that money back. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, or deducted, and sometimes get it back even if they didn't pay that in. Many times, young people too will have a job, and they'll make maybe pay in federal income tax of forty, fifty dollars, and they just think. What's the sense of filing? Well, they need to file to get that money back, you know. Mm -hmm. So many times we have people that just need to file to get a refund. That's the only reason they need to file, uh -huh. you know. Uh, rule of thumb here is if you work, file your income tax. It doesn't matter. Right. They're going to the find out whether you owe or you don't. For late payment and non-filing can be up to 25% of the taxes owed. 
And it's another thing when people get behind, they just, and they're years behind, and they just see no way out, and they just quit filing. So, I mean, they do need to get I caught up. I have people like that. And they can, uh, they can either set up an installment agreement or try to do an offer with the IRS, you know, to take less, which is very difficult. But those things, if you owe less than 50000 you know, you can do that. So, uh, it's, if not, it'll bite you someday. You just need to make them an offer they can't refuse. Right. Well, I don't know what that offer is. <laughs> sure. the first place and then you'll be fine. I'm not sure what that offer is, but okay. Well, Sue, I, I know this is going to be a bit all the way up to April. Right. We may not see you again. Well, I know. That's what I have to say about Lions Club and everything. I don't know if I'll be here or not. You know, so, yeah. There's no guarantee. I usually make it to church, but that's about it. You know? <laughs> and it's probably crazy. numbers are probably still spinning <laughs> right. in your head a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, well, if you need Sue's help and uh, would love to see you, do you mind giving us out your number or right. questions? It's 563-1328. Uh, I'm here on Lester Street, 109 Lester Street, and I'm there, uh, you know, six days a week. I'm not always there all day on Saturday because I have a granddaughter that plays basketball and I'll go <laughs> see her play. So, but we're there and I stay late at night if need be. So I, I want to help people. Well, good. Well, we're glad you're there for them. And you. I think you, you can always call Sue. If I've got a question, I'll just give Sue a call. And if you didn't catch that, you can always call the chamber and I'll tell you. Okay. We'll tell you where to find her. And if she's at the ball game or not. Yes, <laughs> we can, we can probably look at the schedule and tell her if the ball game is going on now. She's going to be there. Thank and you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Sue. We have representing friends of Edgar Evans Park, South State Park, are here today. We have both our guests, and they are coordinating in colors today. Look at there. Did we tell all of our guests to wear red today? I don't know. No, I thought, you know, I did read where on the 1st of February everybody was supposed to wear red. That's for the Heart Association. Yes, yes. for Women's Heart Association. And I was going to mention that today, and I thought, well, this is a fit. But I don't know if I wore red on the 1st or not. <laughs> All month long. Just think about it. Just think about how the heart conditions for women and everything. But we have Miss Anna and Font Bertram from over at uh, Edgar Evans. And... You always have so many interesting things for folks to get out and do mm -hmm. on the schedule. And it starts early. <laughs> it starts so early. Dress accordingly. Uh, even though it might be cool, it's nice out today. You know, last week 15, this Ooh. week 60. So. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to kind of excuse us if we talk today. Both of us are down kind of with... Uh, uh, respiratory uh, problems, and mm. if we sound like we're talking out of a barrel, uh, we probably are. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, one of the things that uh, we try to concentrate on on, on our state parks is the fun aspect of it. Uh, we try to enhance our parks both by volunteer services and monetarily, uh, but also uh, services to the community and provide uh, recreational opportunities for the, the people there. Matter of fact, we started out first thing this year on New Year's Day. Ooh, yeah. We had a, a three and a half mile hike and then had a, a, a traditional luncheon with uh, black eyed peas, ham hocks, uh, collard greens, uh, uh, all of the traditional New Year's Day things. We shared that over at the park. Uh, and uh, uh, we had uh, uh, 39 people show up and well, had a, a really good crowd. Great a good crowd. And, and, a, and a good hike. Anna is the uh, uh, head of our uh, publicity <laughs> department and our membership department. And I know she's got the schedule there of things that are coming up, and I'm going to let her uh, take over from there. Well, it was this hike he's talking about the moonlight hike, or is there is one that you had? No, this the was the, what they call the first hike. Okay. This is a national movement by parks throughout the country to get people aware of the need to get out and exercise. On the first day of the year. That's right. And uh, the Tennessee State Parks have joined this movement, and most of the parks had a hike on New Year's Day. 
I think we're the only ones that had a full meal. With it. They said feed them a healthy snack and a hot beverage, but we figured, you know, black eyed peas, ham, greens, hey, that's pretty good. Well. You're good to the same, that's what you've got there. Everything is surrounding food. I don't care what it is. If you say them, up, they'll come. That's, that's right. right. And door prizes. Well, actually, it was kind of like a church supper. The park furnished certain things, including the hot beverages and uh, the friends group furnished a lot of things, but people also brought, uh, kind of like for a church supper, mm -hmm. and we shared in, in one of the covered shelters in front of a nice roaring fire. We needed the fire that day, I girls. Bet. It was about 30 degrees, I think, and it Is was that misting where rain. got that upper respiratory? <laughs> no, I got this uh, from my husband. Y'all were shares. sharing it. Yeah, it, this was our anniversary weekend last weekend. Yeah. <laughs> And he came down with it. You lucky thing. Yeah. <laughs> right before we took a special weekend to stay at the Chattanooga Choo Choo in one of the rail cars for the weekend and uh, ate at the station house inn and, you know, all of those, those special things. And believe me, when the temperature is 20 degrees, stay inside the hotel, not the train car. <laughs> we had uh, individual thermostat controls, which were great. But the only problem is those old train cars are not uh, insulated. <laughs> insulated. So as uh, Sue Patrick put it a while ago, it's kind of like staying in an old house. <laughs> we could get it boiling hot right down the middle. <laughs> and when you stood up in that little domed ceiling, it was very hot, but on the edges, it was cold. <laughs> well, they even so. came by and, and told us to leave the faucets dripping so the pipes... Just in case, <laughs> that's never a good sign. <laughs> that, that, that's your first hint right there. <laughs> it was fun anyway, but let's talk about some fun at our park now. Uh, on February 1st, we opened the reservation uh, call lines for uh, the waterfall tour. Mm -hmm. This is an annual event that's been going on about 15 years at the park. We uh, ride state vans and a, a school bus, and uh, our church bus in this case, and go to several area waterfalls each year. We rotate the falls so they're not the same, and we eat a meal out. Uh, this year we'll be eating again at the Golden Corral in Cookville, which is a popular stop. And we will be visiting three falls. We're going to revisit Cummins Falls, which is the newest state park. Next to the newest. Next to the newest state park. And we were there last year, but it had just been declared a state park. And they've done a lot of improvements. And we want to go back and see, you know, just what's been they done. put some tables up this time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think the falls are more accessible this year. Yeah. We're also going to Waterloo Falls and Roaring River Falls on this They are trip. in Overton County, Overton. Uh, just uh, outside, uh, well, next to Putnam County. Uh, and the date on that uh, is, uh, is March 16th. And uh, as I said, reservations are open now. You can call the park office. And I'm going to read you the numbers, because I always end up here, Carolyn, without these numbers, and you have to help me. So I've got them written down. They can call uh, area code 931-858-2114 or toll free 1-800-250-8619 and get extension 107 or 102 for the reservations. The numbers again, <laughs> I'm going to give the one number. Uh, from here, most people would be calling a toll free number. Yeah, right. It would be 1-800-250. 8619. Now, some people want to know uh, why we don't do waterfalls at Edgar Evans itself. Well, it has a falls called Fancher Falls, but you have to be on a boat in just the right conditions to see it. So we take advantage of the other lovely okay. features in the area, and this has been very popular. People need to wear comfortable shoes. Uh, bring a cane or walking stick if you're a little unsteady because there will be short walks over uneven terrain. No rugged long hikes, <laughs> but there will be some outdoor um, walking. So it appeals to a, a wide range of people. Then I want to give us a plug for the celebration of spring on April 13th. The, uh, my boss says... No cost. Oh. oh, it is $10 per person 
for the uh, reservation for the falls. And this is a fundraiser for the Friends of Edgar Evans State Park. The money goes to the park to help the park. And uh, we are a nonprofit organization created for the sole purpose of supporting our park in uh, financial ways as well as giving them help in areas where they need assistance. Now, you're, you're responsible for your meal, right? Yes, it would be $10 per person plus the cost of the meal. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up, and <laughs> boss. <laughs> <laughs> Did I beat you to the punch on that one? <laughs> and on uh, April 13th, we have a free event, which is, uh, again, by the friends of Edgar Evans State Park. And we put on an all-day free event aimed primarily to families with school-aged children, uh, although individuals may attend and seniors are certainly welcome. But everything that day is free, from boat rides for children over three accompanied by an adult. There will be crafting uh, workshops led by the local Girl Scouts. The Boy Scouts will be demonstrating Dutch oven cooking and they do give samples. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, we'll have Ranger Bramble the raccoon there for uh, entertainment and to uh, stand around for pictures with the children <laughs> and the adults. There will be uh, living history demonstrations and Lori Christensen from Harry Woodbury will be bringing her ballet dancers mm -hmm. uh, to do a performance. They always do a maypole dance and and some other. I uh, saw some pictures from last year, and they yes. were just adorable. The kids out, and some of those uh, little ones with their little outfits. And their I tutus. thought you were going to say they do some salsa, and I just really. That's all. That's all. They do. They love tutus. They were so cute and everything. So. But the celebration of spring on April 13th again is free, and uh, we recommend people arrive at 8 a.m. because there are a few things like the boat ride that they will need to sign up in advance for mm -hmm. for a certain time period. Okay. And uh, it's on a first come, first signed up basis. So some of these things that have a, a limited number, they need to be there right away. But if you just want to drop by during the day, that's okay, as long as you don't expect <laughs> to be on a boat. <laughs> Um, we also have live music, uh, and we generally have a very good uh, Minnie Pearl impersonator. Uh, she, uh, Patsy Jackson, has been doing this for years, and she does uh, such a very good job of, uh, of Minnie Pearl impersonation that uh, she's gotten to be kind of a, uh, a, a, an icon as far as our, our day is concerned. She's a regular. Huh? She's a regular. <laughs> you, you come, you expect to see her there. <laughs> We also will have relay races. Uh, my husband gets really excited over those because he's in charge of that. Um, they're three-legged races and sack races. And, and when we first introduced these a few years ago, we found that not only did the children not know what they were, but most of the adults. <laughs> Their parents, well, yeah. So they joined when in too. When you mentioned Minnie Pearl, I thought now, an older set would know immediately, but I'm wondering how many young people really know who many people Well, you know, that's the thing, but they're Doesn't fascinating. Matter. They're yeah. fascinating. Yeah. She was a fascinating <laughs> character. She, she definitely was. was. So. Besides, they've got Ranger Ramble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they don't care about anything else, do they? But there's some things that are just ageless. So um, those are our big spring events that are coming up. But, you know, we have something going on all year round. And with your permission, uh, we'd like to be invited again. Oh, we <laughs> Come will. fall time, we will. and we'll we'll tell you about our history hayride in October. Oh, I, I want. I've always <laughs> wanted to come to that, and every time that comes up, there's something else that I've got to do, and I've never been able to go. But I would like to go do that. I really would. Well, we'd love to well, have you. We'd love you. to have uh, both of you. But uh, uh, we uh, also have, are a part of a bigger. Uh, friends group, uh, the uh, uh, Friends of uh, Tennessee State Parks Coalition. We now have 37 friends groups throughout the, our park system. 35 of these are like us, 501c3 organizations, and the other two have are in the process of getting 
their nonprofit designation. And just this last week, it was last Wednesday, as a matter of fact, uh, we uh, were in, uh, did a presentation for the uh, House of Representatives, uh, State House of Representatives, and the Senate. Uh, we told them what we're doing and what we're planning on doing and the whole bit at a very warm reception from, from both. This is our second annual uh, Day on the Hill and we've, uh, uh, we plan on doing this uh, on a continuous basis. Uh, we appear before the committees who are responsible for financing and uh, uh, for the policies regarding our state parks and we feel like they ought to know that there's more going on out there than just uh, the park administration and this type of thing. Uh, one of the interesting things we were able to tell them that our friends, our, uh, our uh, friends group throughout the state provided over a quarter of a million dollars in actual money last year for uh, park things and over a million dollars uh, for land acquisitions, uh, for additions to the park, for uh, areas that they needed to enhance one thing or another to the park. But here's the impressive thing. We put in over 500,000 volunteer hours. hours, and that's, that's, that's half a million uh, volunteer hours. And believe me, if you were to just uh, count those at minimum wage, you can, you, uh, you can do the math there and, and know how much that is worth as far as our state and our state parks are concerned. We're very proud of our friends group. Uh, we have one of the more active groups at Edgar Evans, and we're proud of our uh, coalition throughout the state. Uh, we are always looking for good people. Uh, as Uncle Sam would say, point the finger, we want you uh, for our friends group. And we, are, we have a website, which is uh, 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 we try to keep updated. Uh, and I can give you the, uh, uh, the URL on that. Uh, so, uh, and there's an application form on there for anybody who's interested in the park, uh, in the friends group, uh, they can go on and, and do that. And Carol, I'll give you a, a card here, well, both of you, uh, <laughs> one for uh, the coalition and one for, for the friends group. And if, and if you would make that URL available through the chamber, uh, it would be uh, uh, of great assistance to us for people who are interested in looking at what we do. Also, um, I want to mention that we are on Facebook. <laughs> he and does the website, website, I do the Facebook. <laughs> A lot of people are into Facebook though, yes, and we do keep it up to date almost daily. So if you want just the latest news of what's happening, go to the Facebook and our address there is facebook.com slash friends of EESP, Friends of Edgar Evans State Park, just the initials. But you said you were going to give them the website. I did on the card here. Okay, but for those that are listening, it's http colon slash slash f-o-e-e-s-p dot n-e-one dot net. And if you didn't write that down, <laughs> you can call Carolyn and she'll make sure you have all it. that information. I've got it right here. If you, if you forget I, that, you can go online and just put in Friends of Edgar Evans State Park on your search engine and it will bring you up the state page and that will give you a connector to the website that Fount maintains. Now for Facebook, that's a different story. You need to go on Facebook itself if you're a member and just type in Friends of Edgar Evans State Park and it should come up. Well, I think I have to uh, tell you how much you are appreciated because our state parks are used by so many people and it would be, and you know, it's just like with those organizations and because it has state in front of it doesn't mean that everything is funded. Yep. And if it weren't for these groups, just like a lot of organizations, just like with Connie and the <laughs> Senior Citizen Center, if it wasn't for the volunteers yeah. that put in so much time and effort and money, uh, it would be hard to get to do the things that they're able to do and give these events. You may have your state park, but you wouldn't probably have all of these events mm -hmm. that they have mentioned to you now. So. 
uh, I, I just want you to know anybody that puts in that many volunteer hours, you are appreciated. Both well, of you thank are. you, Carolyn. Yeah. You know, one of the first things that we do, and I, I wonder if other people do it, when we're moving to a new community, we always ask what parks are in the area. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing to us. Oh, well, people that come in the chamber, they want to fish, so they want to know where the lakes are. At Grevin State Park. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and then just like Smithville has, you know, unfortunately, we've got the river, which I mean, fortunately we do, but we don't really have any lakes where they can, where they can go fish, but we're in close enough proximity to well, Smithville yes. and all these other areas that they can. The other thing, and you all might think about this, the other first asked question is, do you have a golf course? <laughs> that always amazes me, but I thought, no, but I can find you. Well, <laughs> if we can find a flat spot, I'm going to tell you to have one. <laughs> when I ask that question, do you have a golf course, and they say no, I say good. <laughs> <laughs> but you got your folks is. that love it, and you got <laughs> your folks that don't. That, well, that is one of the they things. They have built good. golf courses in our state parks, and, and that was the worst thing. No, there's one of them that's making any money, just one. Harrison Bay State Park in Chattanooga is the only one that's even breaking even. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's messed up hiking trails all over the place, so... Uh, well, I uh, guess the upkeep and keeping one going all the time, there's a big cost. Yes. There is a big cost. So, there. you golfers out there, forgive me, but don't get, don't come to my state. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come here right on boat and hike. That's what these people are going to do. Yeah. But I will say, up. Carolyn, it's been a long time since we've been to a new community to find a place to live, because we've been here now since... <laughs> Since 1973. <laughs> well, that's about the same time I came in okay. here, Ann. So. <laughs> and one other thing I wanted to add, a lot of people think that to get to Edgar Evans, they have to go to Murfreesboro and go that way. That's a fallacy. All you have to do is go down by the high school, turn left, and go. He can give you the directions better than I well, can. Uh, take Highway 53 to, to Liberty, hit uh, Highway 70, go through Newell Town, uh, about town, yes. uh, <laughs> and go to, uh, uh, about halfway up Snow Hill and make a left, and it's 12 miles back in there. Mm -hmm. But it's a beautiful drive, and it's uh, and the park is just absolutely gorgeous. It is pretty. It is. Edgar Evans is a pretty park. It well, we, I know we got a, just a couple of things that we want to make sure we get in today. Uh, the Oak Feet Store is having their Winterfest event. It's coming up February 23rd. Uh, and for a lot of you folks, that that's something you kind of have on your calendar that uh, happens here annually. And so there'll be a lot of dealer specials uh, throughout the mall and always so many plans. Oh, they Debbie have and, a good time down there. Yeah. Yeah, Debbie and, and Mike always make sure that it's a lot of fun when you come to their event. And I can't believe it, but uh, you, just about this time a year ago, uh, the, the Short Mountain Distillery opened up. And, and they had, have they had, had a, a wonderful year. <laughs> Year. They have brought in, I don't have the numbers right here in front of me, as far as for people that have come in to visit that, <coughs> come into Cannon County, and also you have to realize how many, um, how many times camera crews have come in here. Yeah, we have been on TV it. quite a few times. Oh, the We've Food Network has come in here. There's been... Um, I don't think it was Crossroads. It was one of those shows that was like, they've had several up there filming all the time. Of course, the Moonshiner show and, and different things like yep, that. But they've yep. been on TV and they've won some special awards this year. I don't know if they expected as much that has happened in one year, but it has been a bright spot. But they are having their one year anniversary kickoff event on March the 23rd uh, from 9 to 4. They're going to have food, uh, music, and of course Ceremonies, tastings and different things for the... I think they're going to rename a few things. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I was just up there this past weekend and we, had, we went up uh, because there was some snow and uh, we wanted to just kind of see the area, but they were open and we went in and it was it was fun. Uh, my daughter had not got to see it, so okay, it was a nice. Well, it is nice something time. to see, and don't expect huge things. I mean, it's it's one of the prettiest areas in Cannon County. It's right off of 146 Highway 146 in the Short Mountain community. There's a big sign, drive by there. Uh, they'll be glad to talk to you. So.
Uh, our next chamber mixer that's coming up, it'll be March the 19th, and Stones River Hospital will be hosting that. So uh, if you're interested in doing business or finding out more about what we do, we invite you to come to that. And uh, we're attending some three-star events uh, that tomorrow. are going up tomorrow. So uh, That's a continuation of the three-star, and it's been revised, and that's what we're going to find out. We're going out. to find out what we need to do to make our communities better for you. And, you know, the Chamber's mission is always to help you to network and find out more about your businesses and support those we in the community. promote Cannon County, and we can promote ourselves. <laughs> we can do this. Well, we want to thank uh, DTC and my DTC3 for uh, putting us on there for another month. <laughs> and uh, we really appreciate you uh, watching and looking forward to seeing us. And we will see you in March.